This year's cars are going to be hugely different. I think the most visible difference will be in the aerodynamic shape of the car. Not only are the aerodynamics different, but the whole way the regulations are constructed are completely different. In the past, we've just had to fill boxes or shadow certain planes, but in this set of regulations, we're, we're given a sort of base surface that we've got to work to, and we have to stick within a certain tolerance of it. So that's a completely different way of working for us. The power unit for this year is very different as well. Um, that's going to be fixed until 2025, and it also has to run what's called E10 fuel, so that's 10% bioethanol. So that makes quite big changes to the power unit. We have 18 inch rims and, and tyres that go with that, so that's going to be quite a big difference. And there's also an increase in mass, so I think the cars are going to look very different, they're going to perform quite differently, and I think that's going to be interesting to watch. With such a significant aerodynamic change, pretty much all the components underneath the skin of the car need to change. So all the way from front to back, everything is, is different. You know, all those new components design has been a huge challenge. The new car looks completely different to last year's, and, and that's just a consequence of the regulations. They're, they're a very much different shape. The sort of complexity that we used to have around the bargeboard area is gone, and the differences between the cars are going to be more in the surface shapes. And as a result, I think all of this year's cars will look fairly similar. They'll have sort of similar shapes, and the differences will all be subtle changes in the aerodynamic shapes and the surfaces that we've got, particularly under the car. And probably the most visual bit of that will be the way the floor works. The sort of strakes at the leading edge and the sort of shape and camber in the floor is going to make a big difference. That completely affect the way the car works. The rear wings have got this sort of nice swoopy shape, and I guess you could say the same about the front wing. It's just something completely different to what we had last year. For me as an aerodynamicist or with an aerodynamics background, I quite like the old cars and I've not quite got used to these new ones, but they're just different. The overall performance of the new cars is probably not going to be very different from the old. Obviously the intention of these regulations was to try and improve overtaking and it'll be a little bit of time before we can see whether that's actually happened. See, the cars are a bit heavier, uh, the power unit on the E10 fuel is going to perform slightly differently and the way the aerodynamics are going to work and the setup of the car that goes with it will be different as well. And until we get the best out of that, until we've developed that and through testing and through the first few races, we're not really going to know. But overall, I suspect the performance will be relatively similar to last year. In terms of how we've approached these new regulations, it, I guess it's like we would do for any new change. You, know, you look at the rules and you see what opportunities you think are there you test that first set of rules, your first iteration of what you want to do and you, you look at the flow field around it in aerodynamics and you see whether it looks similar to what you've had before, what are the differences, where are the opportunities and you gradually chip away at changing that. The big challenge over the winter has been the fact that we have less runs to use in the wind tunnel. So, so that's been challenging, trying to work out how much we should have spent on last year's car versus how much we should have spent on this year's car. And this has knock-on consequences all the way through the factory. You know, in terms of the design work, we start the design work early on things like gearboxes and chassis, and particularly because the gearbox is fixed for a period of time, we've had to get that right. But once we then begin to understand what the aerodynamics are going to look like and how that's going to knock on to the rest of the car, we then get into sort of the detailed design work, and that's been huge over the winter. And, and so this sort of approach we take is, is just the same approach we take every year. It's just more difficult because the rule change is much more significant than we've seen in the past. As an engineer, our job is to try and get the most from the car. We're competing against an opposition and what we're really trying to do is just do a better job than they do. But when you get a new set of regulations, it's a new challenge. It's a challenge to start from scratch. In most years where we've got carryover regulations, you've got a pretty good idea what good looks like you know what sort of gains you need to make from the previous year's car and you can sort of work on a direction of just fine-tuning, finding all those incremental gains that are going to make you a little bit quicker. When you've got a brand new set of regulations, you don't know what the limit is. You don't know where you can get to and that's exciting for engineers. It's an exciting challenge to sort of work out what the opportunity might be and to try and explore all, the, all of those opportunities and try and do that in a better way than the opposition does. We first started working on the regulations for the 22 car back in the start of 20 and we've done all the initial work in CFD, we've done some initial work in the wind tunnel as well, the big development items like gearboxes had started but as Covid kicked in it became clear that we were going to delay the regulations for a year 
Uh, we also had the challenge that we wanted to drop the downforce for the 21 car. You know, it was felt that was a necessary direction. The cars were getting too quick. So we had to turn all of our focus back to the 21 car. And it wasn't until the beginning of 21 that we could actually get back on and work on the 22 car. And all through that, it was about trying to balance the development of the current car versus the future car, with the future car, of course, being the car we're about to run. One of the biggest difficulties of developing this car has been about how much resource we could put into it. Last year we were fighting for a championship and we needed to make sure that we did a good job with that and we also did a good job with this year's car. And that was a big challenge. You know, particularly now the regulations are such that we've got a cost cap. We've also got very limited runs in the wind tunnel. So we had to choose really carefully what resource we spend on the 21 car versus what resource we spend on the 22 car. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the car goes. In a normal year, you've got a pretty good idea what you need to find over the winter. With a brand new set of regulations, who knows what's going to turn up? Who knows what the competition will have brought? And hopefully we've brought enough that we'll be out in front. I think for us as engineers, it's, it, it, it's about the engineering challenge and the, and the sort of what can we bring and, and how can we compete with our opposition. But from a sort of, I guess, standing back as a fan and looking from the outside in, you know, we, what we want is great racing. You know, we want to entertain the fans. We want them to enjoy what they see. And, and hopefully this new set of regulations brings about some really good racing.